hey guys what's up so in this video we're going to be talking about a few important things the first thing that we're going to be talking about are the different types of sizing properties so fixed relative fill and fit content the other thing we're going to be talking about are the minimum and maximum widths um, then we're going to be talking about grids and stacks so let's get to the first one which is the different sizing properties so as you can see i have basically a section and I'm just going to go to the layer. So I have this hero section. I have basically this heading inside of that uh, hero section and I can give it certain things. So the first thing is what what's the width? So I can define the width as fixed. If it's fixed, it can be a pixel sizing. So for example, I can say it's going to be, let's say 50 pixels. So this is going to be 50 pixels. If I say 100 pixels, it's going to be 100 pixels. Pretty straightforward. If I say 500 EM, uh, it's going to be EM. It's not going to be EM because EMs aren't really supported, unfortunately, in uh, Framer, whereas they're supported in CSS. So it's just going to be 500 pixels in width. So we have just pixels when we talk about fixed, uh, fixed sizing. When we talk about relative sizing, relative is percentage. So based on percentage. So is this like 50% of the container that it's in? Is it like 100% of the container? Is it like 25% of the container? So that's what relative is all about. When we talk about fill, fill basically means you need to fill the container that this particular thing is in. One problem with fill, the fill is, however, that if, for example, I have a frame here and I'm just going to copy the same text and place it inside of this frame, now, as you can see, even though it's inside of this frame, uh, it's like floating around. So obviously, as I mentioned in the previous video as well, if something is in with is within a frame, uh, the frame itself does not allow you to actually do a lot of things like sizing and all of that stuff. So um, if we go to this text, we can obviously give it a fixed or relative size based, but we cannot give it a fill container because the fill container option is not really applicable or if something is inside a frame it's only going to be applicable if you have a stack so for example if i was to convert this into a stack now i'm going to have the fill container option available here which is going to respect the padding of this container as well and i'm going to talk about stacks separately so that's what fill means and fill has certain values like one fr one fr basically means like one fraction of the available space and one fraction is like again if you just have one item then that's obviously the, all the space that's available but let's say if i had two items let me just place two items inside of this element so imagine you have this one item and i'm going to place this second item and i'm going to create a, a stack around it i'm going to basically move this stack side by side and i'm going to increase the size manually so as you can see this is one fr as well this is one fr as well so this basically means that i want both of these things to risk to have the same sizing if i was to give this two fr then this particular box is going to be twice the size as that particular box so that's as you can see that's working there as well and this can obviously point be 0.5 fr as well and if both of these are let's say 0.5 fr then that's going to say hey i want you to occupy 0.5 of the width available in this particular container and 0.5 here as well so the, both of them are basically going to be the same sizing so now that we have understood that uh, we've covered most of these things apart from fit content so i'm just going to create a button here to demonstrate what fit content is so contact me imagine i have some text here like that let me just go ahead and increase the size to 24 also make it bold as well maybe so it's a bit more visible semi bold and then i'm going to create a frame around it sorry um, a stack around it and you can create a stack by pressing command option enter and now i can give a padding here basically all around i need a padding of 24 i'm going to add a color here that's going to be something like i don't know it can be something like this and i'm going to give this a border radius as well of let's say 16 pixels i'm going to change the text to white and there you go you have a button now what this basically means is if i go to the text itself or go go to the uh, actual container itself for this button and i'm going to rename this to a button as well this basically says i want you to fit the content fit the content basically means it's going to respect the size of the content that's there and if i try to expand ex just keep on typing it as you can see it's exceeding the container that it's in now if i wanted to restrict that i can also restrict that by setting a maximum width as well if i want to i can say this 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 is going to have a maximum width of 100 percent. so even if the content exceeds i would i would never want it to exceed the container itself and that's something that you can do with max width and max heights and like minimum widths and minimum heights one other thing that you can do is with minimum um, 
widths as well maybe in some cards you don't want them or maybe in some buttons you don't want them to go below a particular point so you can actually add a minimum width or a minimum height as well and i can say this particular button can never go below 200 pixels so as you can see it's going to be 200 pixels but if the content increases it's going to actually scale based on the padding that's available so that's i think i've covered most of the sizing options and now let's talk about stacking and grids so stacking basically is flexbox like if you're familiar with flexbox or you're familiar with auto layout stacking is pretty consistent with that so in stacking you can basically have multiple items and let me actually create a stack around it as well so i have two buttons here here you can apply a stack by just going to this layout thing if the layout is not active that that basically means this is a frame but as soon as you press the plus button here you can decide the type of the layout that's going to be whether it's going to be a stack or whether it's going to be a grid in the grid you can basically have if i let's say do the grid you can define the number of columns the number of rows the spacing in between those uh, columns and rows and stuff along those lines but stacks are going to allow you to basically do something like an auto layout where you can decide the direction that the content is going to flow flow in so is it going to be side by side or is it going to be vertical so it can also be vertical as well i'm going to make the uh, height also fit content so we can always see all of these things similarly actually let me just change the width as well so i'm going to say the width is going to be filling the container itself so we can see some of these additional things as well now if it's side by side i can also decide like is it going to be starting from the left is it going to be at the end is there going to be spacing in between these two buttons is there going to be spacing around these two buttons or is it going to be spaced evenly so this spacing this middle space and the right spacing all is going to be equal if the height was also a bit more so we can actually give a height of let's say 500 pixels then I can also decide like where is it actually going to be aligned is it going to be aligned to the top to the center or to the bottom so those are all things that we can do we can also do wrapping as well if wrapping basically means if we don't have enough space for all of these things then the things are just going to start wrapping in a separate line now as you can see these are wrapping in a separate line now someone's going to be like hey I really want to apply some spacing in between these elements why is the spacing not being applied that I'm setting here so that's an excellent question so if we just go ahead and let's say add a spacing like let's say 50 then the first thing that we need to do obviously we need to go ahead and we can define whether it's going to be starting or whether it's going to be start if we define the start or if we define the center then that spacing is going to be applicable it's not going to be applicable on some of these other options like space between space around or space evenly because space between as an example just let's say this is one item on the complete left one item on the complete right it's not going to respect your gap right that's not going to respect that so if you want your gap to be respected then you need to choose uh, the three options that are available at the top similarly if you were to basically have everything like vertically stacked let me just delete some items as well so we can see what's going on so here we have three buttons that are vertically stacked i can define whether they should be centered and start and all of that stuff and whether what the alignment should be should it be at the left at the middle or at the right and stuff along those lines so you can do all of that you can define what the gap is going to be you can define the padding of the container itself so if i was to give a fill to this particular thing something like this i can define the padding in this particular element so something like this so i can do all of that stuff by just using the stack thing and for those who are familiar with figma i'm pretty sure this is not going to be that complicated it's a pretty straightforward thing so let's just go to grids grids are basically going to allow you to define the number of columns that are going to exist uh, and then it's also going to allow you to define like how these things within those columns are actually going to be positioned so if i go into advanced i can define should these column sizing be auto or should it be fixed or what the minimum width for all of these columns should be where should these things be aligned and all of that stuff so i can define all of those things but i personally think usually in layouts you're going to be using stacks and when you have let's say boxes like large boxes with images or content that's basically filling the whole screen then you're going to be using grids a bit more so that's generally what i wanted to let you know about like uh, stacks grids and the sizing and in the next video hopefully this is going to be sufficient for you to actually follow me with the figma conversion to a template that i'm going to be doing in the next video hopefully and a lot of other intricate details about like let's say the styles the effects the animations and all of that stuff is going to be covered there as well 